Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly tech tip here at 45 Drives. So this week we got a bit of a different one. Uh, we got a host of questions from a user on Reddit. There's like 10 of them there, and they're all really good things, and they all center around uh, 45 Drive Ceph Deploy and the Houston Control Center. So I figured uh, I'd roll through and answer them all in this video. So let's jump into it. All right, guys, so as I mentioned, we got a series of questions on Reddit recently by one data, I'm not even gonna try to say his name. And since I'm only about 70% finished of the next part of my Ceph workload series, I figured this would be a great video that I could get out there to answer the list of questions and help them and help you get a better understanding of the relationship between the Houston Control Center, 45 Drive Ceph Deploy, the Ceph Dashboard, and what tool you should use for which job. Oh, wait, wait. Can't keep going until I give a small update. For those of you waiting for the next Ceph workload tuning video, I promise it's coming very soon. Very excited to share some insight into RBD tuning, some performance characteristics of KRBD versus LibRBD, and just overall cluster tuning that can help your clusters being used for VM and RBD workloads really improve. All right, so the full list of questions will be posted in the description below, so you can get the full context of everything I'm gonna talk about. But I decided not to just answer the questions one by one, but instead just start talking and answer all the questions as I ramble on. Just kidding, I don't ramble. Okay, I ramble. But to start, 45 Drives publishes a suite of modules we've developed that are based on the cockpit project called the Houston Command Center. We've done videos on each and every one of these, so I'm not gonna take the time and go through them all individually. But if you want to learn more about those, check out the playlist in the corner of the screen somewhere here. Um, and yeah, so the main module, uh, module I do want to discuss, however, is our 45 drive Ceph deploy. So this one might have turned a few heads for anyone who's worked with Ceph uh, since the old days. And the reason I say that is because one of the earliest Ceph orchestration tools was called Ceph deploy. Now, if you have deployed a Ceph cluster using the original Ceph deploy in the past, congratulations, because you just earned the OG of Ceph badge. So check mark there. It has actually since been deprecated and Ceph has moved on to bigger and, well, some might say better things, hint, hint, we might not be one of them, with Ceph ADM. And today I'm not going to go in depth on the pros and cons of Ceph ADM here, but for context sake what I'll do is talk about Ceph ADM and, and it is the newest orchestration tool built by the Ceph team. It looks to containerize many of the services within Ceph. So I'll say right here, there's quite the discussion raging on right now as the benefits versus drawbacks of the containerization of storage and key infrastructures. But 45 drives, we firmly landed in the camp of bare metal with the acknowledgement that containerization does bring some benefits to the table. Anyway, that's a topic for another day. So being this nostalgic people that we are for those good old days, we decided to bring back the name Ceph Deploy for our Houston module. So what is it? Well, in a nutshell, Ceph Deploy is an intuitive UI-driven cluster deployment tool that uses Ansible under the hood. So this helps users that may not be familiar with the ins and outs of Ceph Ansible to click through menus, select whichever servers you'd like to use for the Ceph services, plug in variables, and then let Ceph Deploy generate the Ansible playbooks as may be needed. So for the person who asked the question, and for others who may be not be familiar, Ceph does not require an orchestration tool at all for you to actually build a cluster. You can manually build an entire cluster from scratch, starting first with your monitor and moving on. Obviously, this can be very time consuming and error prone because you have to manually create your own key rings, your comp files, enable and start services, etc. Then there's different many orchestration tools out there as well that help make this process easier. Some are completely native, meaning they're developed from the ground up for Ceph. And others, like Ceph Ansible, which was still directly developed with, by the Ceph team, uses another tool like Ansible as its orchestration tool, which wasn't purpose-built for Ceph, but its features are great for deploying a cluster. Where it can get a little confusing, and people may not be familiar with all of this, is that a tool like Ceph Ansible can use a native orchestration tool like Ceph ADM in its playbooks as well as you wish. So it can get a little dicey there. So we at 45 Drives do not actually use Ceph ADM at all in our deployments as of today, November 2021. We use our cockpit module 45 Drive Ceph Deploy, which uses Ceph Ansible under the hood to deploy the cluster bare metal. So hopefully that clears everything up. So next in the questions, uh, the users seem to have a bit of confusion about what 45 Drive Ceph Deploy can do, aside from actually building a cluster. So 45 Drive Ceph Deploy nor Houston is designed to give an overview of your entire Ceph cluster or manage the cluster services themselves. The Ceph dashboard is going to be your best bet for those types of things. 
We have a video that runs through the Ceph dashboard if you want to get into it and get a peek at that. It was released about a year ago, uh, so there may have been, or there definitely was some additions since then, but it'll still give you a great overview of what the Ceph dashboard can do and what it's made for. So Houston's great strength is the ability to manage the individual servers that make up your cluster itself. You can even add additional servers under a single Houston instance so you don't have to open separate browser windows for every server within your cluster. Finally, I want to respond to the question about Ceph, 45 drive Ceph deploy not being designed to run out of the box for non storinator service. The user also asks if device aliasing is proprietary technology. So it isn't that we lock Ceph deploy down to not run on other servers, it's just that we developed it so it would work seamlessly with our own hardware. The great thing is you can actually pretty easily set up any servers you want to use device aliasing because all it really is is some UDEV rules that we create to make the dev disk by path very simplistic and to correlate the name of the slot and the storinator for each easy drive management. If there's enough interest, we can definitely do another video showing you how to set up device aliasing using UDEV rules. So here at 45 Drives, that P word, proprietary, is one that we normally don't dare utter, but just for this video, I made an exception for you, so you better love me. All right, guys, that about covers everything you asked for. Thank you so much for the great questions, by the way. Uh, we'll happily hop on here and answer such well thought out questions anytime. So please, if anyone has anything you'd like to see or question for us, please let us know on any of our social media, and we'll be sure to get back to you.